This is the story of Osborne Reef, a project where good intentions turned into an underwater disaster. In 1972, off the coast of Fort Lauderdale, Florida, a seemingly innovative idea began to unfold. The plan was simple, tackle two problems simultaneously by creating an artificial reef using discarded car tires. The goal was to dispose of waste while fostering marine habitats, a vision that garnered government approval and support. With boat engines roaring, the first load of tires plunged into the ocean's clear waters. Captain Mike Roberts, the project's leader, watched with pride as his crew dumped hundreds of tires into the sea. We're building a home for fish and coral, he declared, brimming with optimism. The team believed they were contributing to a groundbreaking environmental solution. Initially, the concept seemed promising. Artificial reefs had been successfully built using materials like concrete and steel, which provided stable surfaces for coral and marine life to thrive. Tires, being abundant and durable, appeared to be another viable option. Mike and his team envisioned a vibrant underwater ecosystem flourishing within the Osborne Reef. However, what followed was a cautionary tale. Unlike traditional reef materials, the tires failed to stay in place. Ocean currents and storms dislodged them, sending thousands of tires scattering across the seabed. Without proper anchoring, the tires became a destructive force, damaging existing coral reefs and displacing marine life. Instead of creating a thriving habitat, the Osborne Reef became an ecological nightmare. The tires degraded over time, leaching pollutants into the water and posing a threat to marine ecosystems. Efforts to rectify the situation proved daunting. Removing the tires required extensive resources, specialized equipment, and substantial funding, leaving the problem unresolved for decades. What began as a well-intentioned project to benefit the environment turned into a reminder of the importance of foresight and research in ecological initiatives. The Osborne Reef now serves as a cautionary tale illustrating how ambitious ideas can have unintended and lasting consequences when executed without proper planning and understanding of the natural world. For months, a fleet of specialized barges and ships worked tirelessly to transport massive loads of discarded tires from the shore to an underwater site. Cranes and conveyor belts efficiently transferred the tires onto the boats, where they were bundled together using strong ropes and metal clips. At sea, Divers meticulously placed the tire bundles on the ocean floor, believing the structures would endure the ocean's powerful currents. The effort was monumental. Over 2 million tires were deposited across the seabed, covering an area equivalent to 35 football fields. It was an ambitious project requiring extensive coordination and resources. The team proudly named it the Osborne Reef, optimistic about the positive impact it would have on the marine ecosystem. Initially, the results seemed encouraging. Small fish began darting through the tire structures, and a green film of algae coated the rubber surfaces, creating the appearance of a developing habitat. Mike and his team celebrated what they believed to be a revolutionary success for ocean conservation. But as years passed, the reality turned grim. The coral growth they had anticipated never materialized, and the thriving marine life they envisioned failed to appear. Instead of a vibrant underwater sanctuary, the Osborne Reef slowly devolved into an eerie tire graveyard. The ocean's relentless forces soon exposed the flaws in their design. The metal clips holding the tires together corroded and snapped, while ropes weakened and broke under the strain of currents. Unsecured tires scattered across the seabed, damaging existing coral reefs and spreading far beyond the original site. By 1990, the consequences of the project became more apparent. One summer day, 12-year-old Jenna Martinez was strolling along the beach with her family when she spotted something unusual in the sand. A weather tire, crusted with tiny sea creatures. Dad, look at this. Jenna called out, holding up the batter tire. Little did she know, her discovery hinted at a much larger ecological disaster unfolding beneath the waves. A cautionary tale of how good intentions and insufficient planning can lead to unforeseen consequences. 
Her father walked over, puzzled to see a tire washed up on the shore. Little did they know, this was just the beginning of a much larger issue. In the following years, tires began appearing on Florida's beaches in alarming numbers. On some days, the shoreline was so littered with tires that it was difficult to walk without tripping over one. Residents and beachgoers alike began to wonder where all these tires were coming from. Beneath the surface, the situation was even worse. The loose tires had become destructive forces, acting like giant rubber bowling balls that collided with and destroyed coral reefs that had taken decades to grow. The once vibrant ocean floor was transforming into a wasteland of scattered debris. When scientists ventured underwater to investigate, they were stunned by the devastation. A marine scientist from the University of Miami described the scene as resembling a war zone. Tires were everywhere, piled on the seabed, lodged between rocks, and even wrapped around the flippers of struggling sea turtles. The original dumping site, meant to foster life, had become a barren dead zone. Instead of attracting fish and coral, it was now a desolate expanse of sand and rubber, hostile to marine life. By the early 2000s, the scope of the problem was undeniable. The question wasn't whether something needed to be done, but how to address such an enormous task. Removing over 2 million tires from the ocean floor would require ingenuity, resources, and unwavering determination. In 2007, a breakthrough came. Coastal America, a federal agency, decided to tackle the tire recovery project as part of a military training initiative. Army diver Jason Yakovenko and his team were deployed to the site, recovering around 1,000 tires daily in the initial phases of the operation. It's like trying to clean up an underwater landfill, Yakovenko remarked. But every tire we bring up is one less threat to the marine ecosystem. The cleanup was fraught with challenges, strong ocean currents, limited visibility, and the constant risk of entanglement in the debris. Yet despite the dangers, progress was being made, one tire at a time. The effort gained traction as environmental groups and local communities joined in. Dive shops began organizing volunteer weekends, inviting certified divers to assist in the cleanup. Under professional guidance, these volunteers worked together to remove smaller, accessible tires, leaving the more entrenched ones for experts. The collaborative effort sparked hope, proving that with determination and teamwork, even the most daunting challenges can be addressed. Slowly but surely, the Osborne Reef was beginning its journey toward recovery. These efforts not only sped up the cleanup but also brought marine conservation to the forefront of public consciousness. Volunteers expressed a profound sense of fulfillment and connection to the ocean after participating in underwater cleanup missions. What began as an ecological disaster gradually evolved into a rallying point for environmental stewardship. However, it soon became evident that volunteer efforts alone wouldn't be enough to address the massive scale of the problem. In 2015, the Florida Department of Environmental Protection stepped in, allocating $1.6 million to fund a professional cleanup operation. The Industrial Divers Corporation was hired for the monumental task, with an estimated timeline of over two years to complete the job. Divers tethered to barges worked tirelessly to retrieve tires from the ocean floor. It's like underwater archaeology, said Maria Gonzalez, the project's lead diver. We're uncovering the mistakes of the past, but we're also finding pockets where nature is starting to heal. In some areas, life is beginning to reclaim the space. The retrieved tires were transported to Port Everglades and then hauled by truck to Tampa where they were burned to generate electricity. This strategy ensured that the tires, once a symbol of environmental harm, could at least contribute positively as an energy source. As the cleanup gained momentum, a surprising figure stepped forward, Captain Mike Roberts, the man who had spearheaded the original Osborne Reef project decades earlier. Now in his 80s, Mike had spent years grappling with guilt over the environmental damage caused by his well-intentioned but misguided efforts. Determined to make amends, he approached the cleanup team with an unexpected offer. I know these waters better than anyone, 
Mike said, his voice heavy with emotion. Let me help you map out the worst affected areas. Initially met with skepticism, the team eventually gave him a chance. Mike's deep knowledge of the ocean floor proved invaluable. He helped the divers locate hidden clusters of tires and navigate treacherous underwater currents. His involvement significantly improved the efficiency of the operation. Word of Mike's participation spread quickly, sparking a public debate. Some praised him as a symbol of redemption, celebrating his efforts to undo the damage he had inadvertently caused. Hashtags like Mike Redemption trended, with supporters hailing his determination to make things right. Others, however, were less forgiving. Critics labeled his involvement a publicity stunt, accusing him of trying to rewrite his legacy rather than addressing the real issues. Hashtags like too little too lit also trended, underscoring the divide in public opinion. Despite the controversy, Mike's commitment resonated with many, offering a powerful lesson in accountability and the possibility of making amends. The cleanup of the Osborne Reef became more than just an environmental effort. It turned into a story of redemption, resilience, and hope for the future. Despite mixed reactions, Captain Mike Roberts stayed committed to righting his past mistake. His persistence paid off during a routine mapping expedition when he noticed an unusual sonar formation. Upon investigation, divers discovered a thriving coral colony growing among the discarded tires. This surprising ecosystem provided scientists with valuable insights into how corals adapt to challenging environments, leading to breakthroughs in coral restoration techniques that accelerated the reef's recovery. Mike's keen observation had indirectly contributed to a major scientific advancement. One day, standing on the beach as trucks hauled away tires for recycling, Mike addressed the gathered crowd. Tears welled in his eyes as he reflected on the journey. I may have started this mess, he said, his voice heavy with emotion, but I'm grateful I lived long enough to see it fixed. Take care of our oceans, they're resilient, but they still need us. As the cleanup continued, marine biologists made intriguing discoveries. Dr. Elijah Katz from the University of Florida observed unusual behaviors in certain fish species that had adapted to life among the tires. Some species have developed unique feeding techniques to take advantage of the tire environment, Katz reported. These adaptations became a focal point for researchers studying how ecosystems evolve in response to human impact. The Osborne Reef cleanup became a global case study in environmental remediation. In 2018, Fort Lauderdale hosted an international conference to share lessons from the project and discuss strategies for preventing similar disasters. Conservationists and scientists from around the world came together to explore innovative solutions to restore damaged marine habitats. By 2020, significant progress had been made. Thousands of tires were removed, leading to noticeable improvements in water quality and the gradual return of marine life to previously barren areas. However, the challenge was far from over. Over half a million tires remained, many buried in sand or encrusted with marine organisms, making removal a delicate and hazardous task. Cleanup teams had to carefully balance the urgency of removing the tires with the risk of disturbing the recovering ecosystem. In 2022, 50 years after the Osborne Reef was first created, a new ally joined the effort. Tech billionaire and environmental advocate Elena Reeves saw an opportunity to test advanced cleanup technologies. Her company, Ocean Tech Solutions, deployed a fleet of autonomous underwater vehicles, AUs, to support divers in locating and retrieving tires. We're merging cutting-edge robotics with human expertise, Reeves explained at a press conference. Our AUs can map the seafloor and pinpoint tire clusters, making the process more efficient and safer for divers. Reeves' involvement injected new energy into the cleanup project. The AUs proved instrumental in accessing hard-to-reach areas, accelerating the removal process. By 2023, the combined efforts of divers, volunteers, and technology had removed a majority of the remaining tires, transforming the Osborne Reef into a beacon of hope for environmental recovery. 
The Osborne Reef story, once a cautionary tale, became an inspiring example of perseverance and innovation in the face of environmental disaster. It underscored the importance of learning from past mistakes and demonstrated that with dedication, collaboration, and technology, even the most challenging problems could be addressed. Today, the Osborne Reef stands as a symbol of humanity's capacity to heal the planet and safeguard its future. The introduction of advanced cleanup technology brought a transformative shift to the Osborne Reef project. Within months, over 600,000 tires were successfully removed, allowing marine life to reclaim the cleared areas. Coral began to flourish and fish returned, bringing vibrant signs of recovery. Yet the story of Osborne Reef remains a powerful lesson in unintended consequences. The Osborne Reef, once seen as an innovative solution, became a cautionary tale of unintended environmental consequences. While some marine life is rebounding, full recovery could take decades, showing the delicate balance of ecosystems. Captain Mike Roberts, who initiated the project, now reflects from a retirement home by the sea. We truly thought we were helping, he shared. This shows nature doesn't always react as we expect, but the effort to fix it gives me hope for future challenges. The reef's future remains uncertain. Will it become a thriving marine habitat or a reminder of the need for caution in altering nature? The Osborne Reef teaches us that even good intentions can have lasting impacts, urging us to act responsibly and think ahead.